seafood and more seafood. This is Xiamen, China. This week, Melvin experiences life in a rustic fishing village and gets his hands on plenty of fresh oysters, literally. They're very confident with their oysters. They're super fresh. Look at that. Next, he meets the owner of a famous restaurant chain and learns the wonders of Fuji and home cooking. So he's gonna cook a soup with these guys. He will then put all inspirations into a personally cooked meal for both families. One country, two very different families. This is Singaporean chef Melvin Lee and he'll be discovering Asia through the private kitchens of Asia's family. Xiamen, a city of the Fujian province, is also known as the main gate of China. It served as the heart of China's trading for more than a thousand years and is today a vibrant metropolis city. My first time in China, uh, I'm very excited. Uh, embarrassed to say, me being a Chinese, I've never been to China. So this trip, I hope to learn a lot and uh, maybe rediscover my roots. The main draw for Mel here is the food. Everywhere here seems to be selling seafood, seafood and more seafood. Seeing all this live seafood in Xiamen got me really excited. You know, they have stuff like this, everything is fresh. I'm very impressed. And the list of impressive food continues with the oyster pancake. Oyster pancake is a street food hugely popular in Asia, from Singapore to Taiwan. And Xiamen is where the dish originated. So other oyster cakes that I tried has a lot of starch. But this one, no, there are more oysters than anything else. Enticing as they may be, these street fairs are not Melvin's main mission here in Xiamen. Melvin is visiting two very different families and through their home cooking, learn everything about this ancient city. The big day begins with a half-hour ride across the bridge to Da Deng Island. There's no better way to sample Xiamen's abundant seafood than at a fishing village. Melvin is meeting the Thai family, who's lived on the island for more than 50 years. So meeting Mr. Chai is like he lives in the village. So very different from the people I hang out with. I, I didn't know if I would fit in, but uh, people here, they are so simple. They don't pass any judgement on you. They just accept you for who you are. Mr. Tai brings Melvin to the shore to experience what they do in the village. I arrived at the beach uh, with Mr. Chai and it was so quiet and all you hear is the sound of the sea. Next, Mr. Chai takes Melvin to his neighbour's house. All over China, there are people harvesting oysters, but the oysters here are exceptionally uh, delicate and the flavour is very good. He said it's something to do with the water. So I met a lot of uh, very capable ladies shuckling oysters. Uh, I do shuckle a lot of oysters in my younger days as an apprentice, but uh, this time it was more challenging. Why? Because I didn't have the proper shuckling knife. So it's a bit tougher because the meat is so much more delicate. To complete the shopping list, they next head over to the local market. This seaweed is like the rock star of the veggie world here. Uh, they're very proud of it and they say that it's very clean. They make this cake with sweet potato flour and then uh, quite a unique colour. We're over here buying uh, sweet potato and from the olden days, they already oh, have this. Yeah and they use it to make their meals more substantial uh, because back in those days, they're not so well off. Now it's time for some real Fujian cooking. So the first dish uh, Mr. Chai is going to teach us is uh, oyster cake. 
Seeing the preparation of the oyster cake, I was very surprised. The way I was brought up in the culinary world that we either eat it raw or we put it in a vinaigrette to lightly cook it, cure it a bit, but never deep frying it, I guess. It says when it's crispy on the outside, golden brown, you can take it out already. Done. Next dish, a traditional Fujian seaweed soup. Me being Cantonese, I always have this impression that good soup can only come if you really slave over the stove from day till night. But uh, the seaweed soup was surprisingly very good. Preparation is so easy. They really want to bring out the natural flavour of the seaweed. The seaweed here has practically no sand in it. It's very clean. It's a dish that everyone who is from this area holds very close to their hearts. It's like their childhood dish. The last dish is a stir-fried sweet potato sliced cake with Chinese cabbage. We all know people here really like sweet potato. Again, to give variety and also in a way, they invented this sweet potato rice cake. Like today, it was sliced and it, it acts like noodles. Finally, it's time for a good old family meal the village way. It's the sweetest smelling and the best tasting sweet potato I've ever had. Very nice. And I can understand why. In the past, they, they, they can't really afford meat. So the sweet potato give it a good flavour. So right here goes the oyster cake. Eating a mouthful of very sweet, tiny oysters. At the same time, having vegetables with them. Very nice. <laughs> The balance is so good. Okay, now for the sweet potato cake slices. Tastes very chewy. Good texture. So here we go, the seaweed soup. The seaweed tastes different from the normal ones I used to have. Uh, these guys are longer. They are sturdier. They don't break up as much in the, in the soup. As you can see, it's very long. Up next, Melvin gets invaluable tips on modern Xiamen cooking through a local restaurateur. The visit to Da Deng Fishing Village was a glimpse of what Xiamen could have been like hundreds of years ago. Today, though the traditional architecture and culture still lingers, Xiamen is undeniably a fast modernizing city. Uh, yesterday, a whole day of uh, village life with Mr. Chai. Today, back in the city where I'm more familiar with, so really looking forward to a whole new day of experience. To help him experience the new Xiamen, Melvin is meeting an accomplished restaurateur. First time meeting Mr. Tan, a very business-like man. He's always on the roll, he's always uh, busy with something. It feels more familiar to me. Before they hit the kitchen, Mr. Tan takes Melvin to the local market, best known for the freshest seafood. I've been to so many wet markets around the world. Wet markets are more in the residential area. But this market is located uh, in the city. <laughs> Very interesting. And it's been there for more than 80 over years. It's just like any wet market, though, but like 10 times the size. <laughs> and now we're just buying some uh, mud crabs that are native uh, to this place. Uh, so just by looking at the shell, uh, you will know where there's a color change. And uh, once the tone gets a bit uh, lighter, that's where the roll ends. 
So he says by seeing the color, you know how much roll this guy has. We are going to buy a sardine. This sardine is found in the sea. We are going to buy a sardine. We are going to buy a sardine. We are going to buy a sardine. She actually pierced the sea worm on the top and she turns it inside out with the, the skewer, the wooden skewer, to get rid of all the sand. So yeah, I think uh, that, that is a very important thing to do because the last thing you want is a mouthful of sand. So he's buying the smaller squids. I'm asking him why. They have huge ones over here. He said uh, the locals like the smaller one. Why? Because they feel that it's, uh, the texture is better. With all the ingredients purchased, Melvin can't wait to start cooking. So the first dish uh, Mr. Tan will be teaching me is a uh, bing zhou fried crab. This this is the Bing Zhou fried crab. So the next dish we're gonna do is sauteed baby squids with uh, rice wine, green onion, ginger. That was a very cool dish. Uh, I can understand why it lasted for so many generations. Because it's fast free, it's very easy to prepare, and it's done in seconds. Now, the squirmiest dish in Xiamen, the sea worm soup. Back in the days, people already are uh, having uh, sea worms. And uh, then till now, it is still as valuable because uh, they don't grow of abundance like the other seafood. Why is it so expensive? Why is it so rare? It's a lot of manual work. You need to get fishermen to walk the banks to find them. Now, why people like it? Because it's full of protein. Uh, yeah, it would be quite interesting to see me eat this. Dinner is ready and I can't wait to dig in. I'll be trying to crack first. It's very, very good. I kind of underestimated this little guy. The crab roll is so full in the, in the crab. Cooking till the liquid uh, is totally reduced scared me a bit because um, when I was taught how to cook squid, it was either you cook it for a very short period of time or a hell of a long period of time. But this was like 15 minutes and it's still nice and tender, very flavorful. Last but not least, the juicy squirmy worm dish. To be very honest, it's the first time I've never had this in my life. Ready? This is very nice. Many little guys. It's like the wormy version of uh, bamboo clams. It's not slimy at all. And the soup is so clean. Very nice. Up next, Melvin is tasked with creating a Xiamen-inspired meal for the two families before he bids his farewell. 